Don't forget number 15. If you don't believe me, you can Google it. Anything to the zero power always equals one. So we're looking for the whole quantity to be to a power of zero. Easy, just don't forget. Now the next one again, um, it says bacteria can multiply at an alarming rate when they increase by 2% each day. We know it has to be increasing. And if it's increasing, that means the rate has to be greater than one. All right, so you should be able to eliminate. Th this rate right here, is that greater than one? No. This rate right here is saying one subtract something. Is that rate going to be greater than one? If you did that math, no. So these are the only two that uh, rate is greater than one. It says if we start with only three bacteria, which exponential equation best represents the scenario? So increasing by, once again, a percentage. If it's increasing, we need to add it to the 100%. That leaves us 102. And then we have to change it back to a decimal. So that leaves us 1.02. That's what we're looking for. Does that look like 1.02? Definitely not. If you do the math right here, 1 plus 0 0.02, if you put in the calculator, this is the same one that's equivalent here. All right. So this says a graph for the exponential function of this is shown below. Use this graph to determine, I'm sorry, to answer questions 17, 18, and 19. So they already give you a graph and they give you the equation. You should be happy. Domain is all real numbers. We don't have to worry about any special domain because it doesn't give us a word problem or anything. You can write it like this, you can write it like that, or you can write it from negative infinity to positive infinity. These are three different ways you can write the domain of all real numbers. What is the range of the function? The range, I, it looks like I can tell I am using a greater than sign, and I know my range should be talking about y values. So all my y's are going to be greater than this line right here. And that line is at the y equals 0, so everything's greater than 0. Because it's pointing up here. And this line, this little piece of the graph is never going to go below that line, which talks about the asymptote. This bottom or the left part of my graph, it is never going to actually touch the y equals 0, but it does look like it. So the asymptote is y equals 0. It's never going to go below the y equals 0, and it's actually never going to touch it. So just remember, asymptote is y equals 0 for your algebra 1 life. Number 20, the table right here models the number of desktop computers sold per year at a local technology store. Which exponential regression is used to determine a function for this data? So it doesn't really tell you if it's increasing or decreasing, but look at your table. That's one question you should keep asking yourself. Is it growth or decay? Either by reading it or by looking in this table. This is definitely decay. So we know if it's decay, the rate has to be less than 1. All right. The other thing you should notice, this right here is something special because where x equals 0, it gives us a special number, the y-intercept, which is the initial value, which is the starting point, which is that a value. And the a value belongs in front, so we know that this one cannot be the answer. So what's up with b and c? They look just alike. Yeah, we haven't really dealt with that. That's for our geometric sequences. This is actually an exponential equation, so it can't be C either. It's going to be P. Um, honestly, it would have been maybe easier for you to just put this in your Y equals and see which table matches. I didn't think about that. But you could have just put this in the Y equals and see if your table match, or this in the Y equals, see if your table matches. That probably would have been easier for some people. Um, now you're definitely going to have to use this equation to figure out what would be the number of computers sold after 10 years. So use your calculator if you need to pause the video to do that. All right, the answer is C. 
right here, this was a little tricky. Um, it says, which graph represents an exponential function with the initial value of 2 and a rate of growth of 3 over 4? Does that sound funny to you? It's a rate of growth of 3 over 4. That don't sound funny? 3 over 4, if the rate is 3 over 4, that should mean that it's decaying. But they, it said rate of growth. So, well, I know it can't be A. This is a linear function. No, I know it needs to be an exponential. That's a line. Sorry. This is a line. That's not exponential, so it can't be A. This one right here, the initial value is not touching the 2, so it can't be C. It's either going to be B. If you were looking at the 3 over 4 rate, then it's going to be B. Yes, however, if you looked at growth, because some people said, oh, well, it has to be growth, which means it has to be increasing. So the answer is D. So I would say I wouldn't be mad at you if you, if I don't, I hope the problem on this, like, I'm sorry, I hope the test problem is not like this. I don't think it is. I think it might be a typo. So either or, I mean, I would not mark you off because I understand if you go with growth, it's that one. If you go with the actual rate, it's that one. All right. Problem 23, um, the exponential function contains ordered pairs as shown in the table at the right. Well, there's two of them. What is the rate of growth for the function? How do you find the rate from looking at the table? Maybe, hopefully you remember climbing up the ladder. So starting with the 1024, I'm going to do what? Divided by, 128. Divide it by 128, see what that equals. And then I would definitely double check. Take 128 and divide it by... 16 and make sure you get the same answer for that one. Okay. And then over here, 351 divided by 117. Because you start at the bottom, you climb up the ladder. Um, 117 divided by 39. Or you can even take 39 divided by 13. So if you just divide it, you should get the same number each time. That's definitely the rate of 3. And this one is 8. And the last one, the value V of a certain investment quadruples in every month M. You got to know what quadruple means. Which function can be used to find the value of an investment at the end of M months if there is initial value of 275? So once again, setting up the equation, initial value, that should be a 275, 2.75 which means 275 should not have a power on it. So it's going to be one of these. And we need to make sure the power is actually the variable, so it can't be that one either. Yeah, this one's kind of weird. It tells you quadru well, quadruple is 4, so we know our rate should be 4. Does this, this doesn't even, this is like funny looking. So answer is D. The rate is 4, has the power of M or X, and that's your initial value.